Welcome to another message from God's Word. We're studying the book of Matthew from the Greek language, Katamathio. And we're talking about the end times, Israel's trouble or Jacob's trouble. And we're going to start out in the book of Daniel today before we even go into the book of Matthew. We're going to go to the book of Daniel, the ninth chapter. And we're going to take a look, a look at what's going to happen to Israel in the end times. As we look over here to our chart, our dispensational chart, hopefully you can see it. We have God's plan of the ages. We have Israel the law of Moses, and the coming of Christ, Jesus came to his people and they rejected him. Jesus will come back again, but in the, in the medium of it, in between that coming, is the church age. Israel will be set aside because of her rejection and her sins. She will be she will curse herself. She said, let his blood be upon us and our children, and it has been for nearly 2,000 years. The church age <clears throat> was prophesied back in, in the book of Genesis in 927 or 925. It would be a time that the Gentiles would dwell in the tents of Shem and carry forth the gospel. And then God is going to call Israel back into the land. Israel has been called back into the land already. She is there. She is still not a believer. But God shall bring her to her knees. Now let's go to the book of Ezekiel in the ninth chapter. Let's uh, go all the way back to the 16th verse, O Lord, according to all your righteousness and justice, I beseech you, let your anger and your wrath be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a reproach and a byword to all who are around us. Now therefore, O, o our God, listen to and heed the prayer of your servant Daniel. And his supplications for your own sake uh, cause your face to shine upon your sanctuary, which is desolate. O oh my God, incline your ear and hear, open your eyes and look at our desolations and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our supplications before you for our own righteousness and justice, but for your great mercies and your loving kindness. Now Jesus is called the man of loving kindness in the Old Testament. He is the man of loving kindness in the New Testament. We have to look back to Ezekiel 14, 12 through 20 and cross-reference to this. O Lord, hear, O Lord, and forgive, O Lord. Give heed and act. Do not delay for your own sake. O my God, because your city and your people are called by your name. God will not resurrect and use Israel because they are righteous but because of his promises and because of his name because of his honor is how he and why he's going to call Israel Israel dispersed in Ezekiel 36 16 through 19 but Israel would be gathered going into 36 20 through 24 and right here in the book of Daniel while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God, Elohinu, for the holy hill of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, now this is the angel Gabriel, this is a messenger of God, whom I had seen in former vision, being caused to fly swiftly, come, <clears throat> came near to me and touched me about the time of the evening sacrifice, Daniel 8 and verse 16. <clears throat> he instructed me and made me understand. He, 
he talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am come forth to give you skill and wisdom and understanding. <coughs> At the beginning of our, your prayers, the word went forth, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore consider the matter and understand the vision. Now you know that Daniel was, uh, was part of the exportation to Babylon. He had two other Hebrew companions. All three of them were neutered. They were, had, they were caused to become eunuchs. And Daniel lived in that country for many years. Seventy weeks of years and four hundred and ninety years are decreed upon your people and upon your holy city Jerusalem to finish and to put an end to transgression, to seal up and purge away and make expiation and reconciliation for sin and bring in an everlasting righteousness, permanent spiritual and moral rectitude in every area and relation and to seal up the vision and the prophecy and the prophets and to anoint the holy of holies. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem and the coming of the anointed one, a prince shall be seven seven weeks of years and sixty-two years <coughs> weeks of years. It shall be a build it shall be built again the city square and moat, but in troublous times. Now this happened. We know Cyrus sent forth the edict to rebuild the city. And after 62 weeks of years shall be anointed one be cut off and killed. <clears throat> and that is Jesus. Jesus, the very day that Jesus was to be crucified was noted down in the book of Daniel. It wasn't something that just happened. It was something that was prophesied. And shall have nothing and no one belonging to and defending him. And the people of the other prince shall come, will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end shall come with a flood. And even the end there shall be war and desolations decreed. Isaiah 53, 7-9, Nahum 1 and 8, and Matthew 24, 6 through 14. And he shall enter into a strong and firm covenant with the many for one week, seven years. And in the midst of the week shall he cause the sacrifice and the offering to cease for the remaining three and one half years. And upon the wing of a pinnacle of abomination shall come, and one who makes desolate until the full determined end is poured out upon the desolator. That's where we are in the book of Matthew. That's Matthew right now. Let's go back and read it from Greek and then we'll translate it into English. The last part of the message was God's sorrow. God has sorrowed over his people many, many times. But now Israel shall weep over her Messiah that she has murdered. And all of this is prophesied upon her because of what she did. Because of what she did. Tote, Arado Susan, Himas, Ace, Thapsen, Kai, Apokadenusen, Himas kai eseste mis su minoi hippo ponton ton ethnon dia to onama mu. Then they shall hand over you all to tribulation. And uh, they shall kill you all, and ye shall be being hated from all the nations because of the name of me. We know that some of this was fulfilled in the church age. But now we're going to the nation of Israel. We're going to turn. We're going to turn. Verse number 10. Kai tote, skandaliste sonte, 
Poloi kai alelos para do susan kai me say susan elenos. And then they shall be offended and scandalize many. And one another they shall hand over and deliver, and they shall hate one another. Verse number 11. Kai poloi pseudo prophete egerethe sante kai plane susan polos. And many false prophets they shall raise up, and they shall had or shall lead astray many. False prophets are still coming. Verse number 12. Kai dia to plethustene ten anominion si ge sete he agape ton poloi. And because to be increased lawlessness, outlawry, it shall grow cold. It, the, the word there, it means to cool off by blowing. Like in the old days, <clears throat> my grandfather used to take hot coffee in a cup. But he would cup and saucer and blow it. And that's what this word means. You take the cup of coffee, pour some of it out into, into a saucer, and blow on it, and then he would drink it out of the saucer. And that's just what this word means. It shall grow cold by blowing the law of many. The love of many, that is, the love of many. The love of many shall grow cold. Verse number 13. Hode hippo menas telos huto so thesete. But the one having endured and remained under the strain unto the end, this one shall be saved. Those of Israel that shall endure to the end shall be protected by God, and they shall also be saved and believe during that very great time of persecution and tribulation. The whole purpose of the tribulation period is to bring Israel back to God. After national Israel repents and believes in the Messiah that they have crucified, they will be God's administrators of His kingdom on earth, epites gaze, upon this earth for 1,000 years during the millennial reign of Christ. And that is right here during this here's the tribulation period. We look from the book of Daniel. It said that the, the false Messiah will make a covenant with the holy people for seven years. <clears throat> for seven years. In Islamic eschatology, it talks about the Mahdi, which the equivalent of the Mahdi in the New Testament is the Antichrist. It talks about the beast, which is in the, in the equivalent in the New Testament, the book of Ezekiel and Daniel and Revelation is a bad guy. It talks about the false prophet. The false prophet, of course, in, in Islam, these people are very good. In the Bible, they're bad. Everything in the Bible that's good is bad in the Quran, and everything in the Quran, as soon as in the Hadith, that is good is bad in the Bible. It's just the total opposite. Let's read now from the book of Matthew, from the Amplified Bible, from verses 9 onward, down to verse 13. Then they shall hand you over to suffer and affliction and tribulation and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. That happened to the churches, and secondarily, it will happen to Israel during this period of time right here. And be hated for my name's sake. Two out of every three Jews will die during the tribulation period. Two out of every three Jews will be killed. At the 
tribulation period, at the beginning of the tribulation period, they will think they're going into a time of peace. Revelation 6 and verse 1. Let's go back there for a moment. Revelation 6 and 1. Last book in the Bible. Revelation 6 and 1. Let's read this a little bit. Then I saw a lamb broke open one of the seven seals, and as it was a voice of thunder, I heard one of the four living creatures call out, Come. I looked and saw there was a white horse, whose rider carried a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he rode forth conquering to conquer. <clears throat> Zechariah 1 and 8 and 6, 1, 2, 3 and Psalm 45 and 4 and 5 or cross reference to this. And he broke the second seal and I heard the second living creature come out and said, Come, this is the living beings. And another horse came out flaming red and its rider was empowered to take peace from the earth so that the men slaughtered one another and he was given a huge sword. That huge sword was to kill many. That's from the middle of the tribulation period onward when this takes place. Now he had a white horse. A horse. White is a color of purity and the color of peace, by the way. He comes on a, a doctrine and a platform of peace, but then he breaks that covenant. In Islamic eschatology it says that the Mahdi will come out of Syria he will be 40 years old he will be a reluctant leader and people will uh, align themselves with them that he will make a covenant and he will have this covenant for seven years this is from Islamic culture that many people will league up with him and that they will follow him and that he will be a war leader. In Islamic culture it says that they will take the Kaaba stone from Mecca and take it to Jerusalem and build a temple there. It says that they will make a covenant with all nations there. And they will take that Kaaba stone there. This will be a, a temple for all nations. Kind of reverting back to, to, to the Kaaba before Muhammad. There were 365 nations, tribe, Arab tribes, leagued there together, and every one of them had a, a, a symbol of their God. It was like their signature on that Kaaba, and they would have four months of peace during the year, and they could travel in peace. Muhammad. use that peace to get control. He made the covenant. It's called a hudnah. A hudnah is you make a covenant with somebody until you become or get the upper hand and then you break that covenant. Because war is deceit, as he said. That's what all is going to take place during this period of time. Another horse came out flaming red and the rider was uh, empowered to take peace from the earth so that men slaughtered one another and he was given a huge sword. The Mahdi, according to Islamic culture, <coughs> will be encouraged and aided by a beast that will come out of Arabia. Now, this beast is going to be a weird looking creature according to Islam. He's going to have the neck of an ostrich the legs of a camel, the head of a bull, the horns of a stag, the eyes of a pig, the front end of a lion, the back end of a cat, the tail of a ram. And he shall mark all the true believers of Islam with a mark of the authority of there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. There is no God but Allah, and He has no companion. He has no Jesus. Now, in this 
Islamic culture, eschatology, it says that Jesus shall appear. Islam. Now what are these people going to do? Number one, they're going to go out and kill all of these uh, mutated forms of life, which are called pigs. They're going to kill all the pigs, all the swine. Then they're going to kill all the Jews. And after they get that done, they're going to kill all the Christians. And they're going to bring in, and they're going to let Issa rule. The Mahdi will hand over his rule after seven years to Issa, to the false Jesus. And when he broke open the third seal, I heard a third living creature call out, Come and look, and I saw, and behold, a black horse. And his hand, the rider, had a pair of scales and a balance. Sharia law. Wherever the Jew, wherever the Islamic people go, they demand to, to be under their own law. They ignore the constitutions of the nations where they come or go, and they want to be under Sharia law. Sharia law—that's this balance, the scale to balance, and what they say goes. They say there are no go zones in America. I, in the Bakersfield area, I see what we might call um, zones, communities, where they buy up all the houses in the area. They put a mosque in, and Islam will buy these mosques and build these mosques with money, cash. And on that land where they are, it is holy ground, and that Islam will protect that holy ground. You see these areas there growing. I see them coming even all the way up Highway 395. They buy businesses. They buy pharmacies. They buy hotels. They buy gas stations. They buy 7-Elevens. They buy Arco stations. They buy all of this. They put their people in there and they build a mosque. And around that mosque, that is holy ground. Well, they're going to build this great temple in Jerusalem. And this black horse, the rider on the black horse, same rider on all these horses, by the way. And I saw, behold, a black horse in his hand, the rider had a pair of scales and a balance. And I heard what seemed to be a voice from the midst of the four living beings saying, a quart of wheat for a day's wages. Sharia law. <clears throat> a quart of wheat for a whole day's wages. And three quarts of barley for a whole day's wages. And do not touch the oil or the wine because that's not for the common man. We have a destitute society that they will bring in with them. And when the Lamb broke the fourth seal, I heard a fourth living creature call out, Come, and look, and behold, an ashy pale horse. Actually, a green horse. Green, the color of death. If you've ever seen a dead body before it was embalmed, it was kind of a greenish hue greenish black hue. And its rider name was Death. The same rider. And hell, Hades, the realm of the dead, followed him closely and they were given authority over power over a fourth part of the earth and to kill with a sword and with famine and with plague and pestilence, disease and with wild beasts of the earth. beast of the earth. Now let's go to one more verse. And that's where we're going to end for this message. When the Lamb broke open the fifth seal, I saw at the foot of the altar the souls of those whose lives had been sacrificed adhering to the word of God and for the testimony they had borne. And they cried out with a loud voice, O Sovereign Lord, holy and true, and how long before you will set judgment and avenge the blood upon those who dwell upon the earth? Zechariah 1 or 12. 
prophecy of this. And then they were each one given a long and flowing and festive white robe and told to rest and wait patiently a little while longer until the number should be complete of their fellow servants and their brethren who were to be killed as they themselves had been murdered and killed. That's uh, the news. That's going to be the news during this period of time. The news. Now we're going to go on in the book of Matthew in our next message and tell you what's going to happen to these Jewish people while all this is happening now. Our Heavenly Father, we send forth this message. We honor and glorify you with it. Father, I pray for those out there in, in these lands where they cannot preach your word, where they cannot openly even say they're a believer of Jesus. Father, I pray for them. I pray for all of my students everywhere that those that are in place where they can worship you and pray openly that they ought to shout praises to God and be happy and blessed that we can do it. Father, I pray for those that might not know you that will, they will come to know you and they will beg you to forgive them of their sins and their shortcomings and trust in Jesus as their Savior in his death, burial, and resurrection. Father, please forgive me where I fail you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.